When she told you about all this, did she have any idea what caused the headaches? No, she believes she was born with them. There's an angry, frustrated woman. Well, they finished supper without her. No, Frank, no bother with these dishes. I don't like men fussing with these things. Why don't you and Tommy have that game of checkers you've been talking about so long? Shall you, them? Hurry it up. I've got to leave in half an hour. No, Tommy. Now, Frank, you know perfectly well he has to work on his arithmetic before he goes to bed. We are going to work on it together every night until he begins to get passing grades. We agreed on that, Tommy, didn't we? Come on. Oh, let them alone, Agnes. Let them enjoy themselves for a few minutes. What do you mean, enjoy? Who do you think this arithmetic is for? It isn't for me. I know how to do fractions. Besides, Tommy's not getting any allowance until he can prove he knows how to handle money. If these lessons are not for his good, what are they for, anyhow? What do you say, Tommy? Don't you want to do your arithmetic? Yeah. Well, come on. And so, headache and all, she went up and drilled the youngster for an hour. Poor woman. Poor child. And poor man. Yes. If he was looking for someone to mother him, I'd say he got more than he bargained for. Frank, you didn't say yes, did you? No, I told him I'd think it over. I suspect that he rather likes it when she boosts his feelings of failure and weakness. That may be why he picked her to begin with. He wants to be punished. I guess you're right, as usual. But I thought if, if I could get out of this rut, if I... Uh, I guess you're right. But she does seem to be attached to him, and yet... Is anything wrong? Did he send for you? she still shows signs of deeply resenting him. She doesn't seem able to stand anything that makes him important. Do you mean they're going to send you there? How awful. Probably because all her life she was made to feel unimportant by her mother. What kind of nonsense have you been talking? Without knowing it, she inflicts on both her husband and son the kind of punishment she had. Well... What about it? You tell me, since I've been so stupid. It's no wonder, with her mother treating her forever like a child. Well, let's sit down. Does Mrs. Randall see that? She doesn't want to. She keeps talking about how much gratitude she owes her mother. That's what she thinks she's supposed to feel. The child doesn't know any better, but to accept all this is a matter of fact. To that boy, a grown-up has become a person who lets you down or punishes you. Wait a minute, Tommy. No, Tommy. Tommy senses that his mother uses him as a weapon against his dad. Now, Frank, you know perfectly well he has to do his arithmetic before he goes to bed. And yet she has an ambition to be a good mother. You can use that ambition. I know I can. After that stealing episode, she's willing to try almost anything. How is it going? Very well, I think. She has begun to go into the relationship with her husband, quite frankly and objectively. Pretty soon, I believe she will start talking about her mother more openly. Understanding the boy will be last. That will be hardest for her. It should be easier for her to understand his problems when she understands her own. If you can just get her to let up on him, give him some air of his own to breathe, I'm sure we can help him a lot. That hostility won't disappear overnight, but we can do a lot for it. Tommy's really a good boy. And if given half a chance, I'm sure he'll prove it, even to her. Tommy, things hadn't changed much by the 10th of May.
She was the one that told Miss Turner that day, you know, about me. Yes, I know. What kind of a girl is she? Oh, uh, just a girl. Sort of skinny. Did you ever have any fights with her? Not especially. She fights with all the kids. She's a teacher's pet. Tell me what happened yesterday. Well, we were on the front steps. The whole class. The kids in the back were pushing. And she pushed me. So I pushed her back. She fell on her face and her nose began to bleed. How did you feel about that? Oh, I don't know. Were you sorry for it? Sure. Were you a little bit glad, too? Oh, I don't know. I felt like laughing. Well, she was a girl that caused you so much trouble. Maybe you felt that a little trouble for her would even things up. Maybe. Maybe when you pushed her back, you happened to have your foot sticking out so she would trip? Maybe I did. Yes, maybe you did trip her, just so you could get even. Anybody would understand that. They would? Well, I would. People usually like to get even with people who do something to them. When somebody is mean to me, I like to be mean right back. I guess I did trip her. I guess you did. Tommy was daring to face himself before spring was over. Let me try now, Dr. Marshall. Wait a minute, I haven't had a chance to beat you yet. There, that makes us even. Now it's your turn to shoot. Wish I could have a hundred turns to see how many bullseyes I could make. That's fine with me. I'll talk with you while you shoot. I was thinking what you told me the other day about Miss Turner. You thought she didn't like you. Why didn't she? She thinks I'm lazy. Are you? I don't know. I just don't know how to do fractions. Why not? Because I'm dumb, I guess. I just don't know how to do them. But you told me Tuesday that you were 10 and 7 twelfths years old. That sounds that you could handle fractions. In school, Miss Turner always gets me mixed up. What do you mean, mixed up? I don't know. Just can't think. You get frightened? No. Do you get mad? I guess so. Why? She never leaves me alone. She's always picking on me. How? Anytime there's any trouble, she always blames me. Why? I'm sorry, Dr. Marshall. The gun slipped. Oh, it didn't hurt very much, Tommy. Do you think people who like you hurt you sometimes without meaning it? I guess so. I know you do sometimes. And I know Mom and Dad do too. Do you hurt people that you really like sometimes? I think so. Like when I hit you just a while ago. I did it on purpose, I guess. Yes, I know. Do you know why? I was mad at you for a minute. Do I ask too many questions? Yes. You want me to quit asking you questions when you come here? No. I like the questions you ask me sometimes. Especially after I answer them, like now. By the time the days got longer, Tommy had changed quite a bit. Get out your shirts. I'll put those name tags on for you. Okay. You don't sound very enthusiastic. Mom, do I have to go to camp? Now, what kind of a question is that? Do I? But I thought you wanted to go. 
Why, just last night you were all excited about swimming and sleeping in a tent. Have you changed your mind? Not exactly. Well, what is the matter? I don't know. Would you and Dad go to New York if I didn't go to camp? Well, what in the world has New York got to do with whether you go to camp or not? We'll be back in three weeks or even sooner if your father finishes his business quickly. Then I have to go to camp, don't I? I certainly don't understand you. Did you talk to Dr. Marshall about camp? Tommy, have you? Have I what? You heard what I asked. Have you talked to Dr. Marshall about camp? I asked you a question. Dr. Marshall says I don't have to tell you what we talk about. Why, Tommy, you little... Well, as a matter of fact, you don't have to if you don't want to. I just thought I could help you. I do want to go to camp, but... Then what's all this fuss about? It's no fuss. I'll just be lonely in camp. Not with a hundred other boys. You'll be too busy to be lonely. If I didn't go to camp, could I go on seeing Dr. Marshall during the summer? I suppose you could. You like Dr. Marshall, don't you? Sure, he's my friend. I know, and I think it's fine. Even if you do go to camp, you'll be seeing him again in the fall. If I do go to camp, I could tell him all I do there. He likes to listen to me. I like to listen to you, too. I know, but he kind of understands me. That hostility won't disappear overnight, but I'm sure we can work on it. It should be easier for her to understand his problems when she understands her own. I know what you mean. It's a wonderful thing. Hey, Mom! What's this? I almost forgot. Tommy's a good boy. And if he's given half a chance, I'm sure he'll prove it, even to her. A good boy? What's that? A mentally healthy boy, maybe. A boy who is learning to express his feelings without hurting himself or others. Tommy is just beginning to find such health because he is being understood and appreciated and respected. But such understanding doesn't always require the services of clinics or doctors or trained psychologists. More and more of us, as parents and teachers, are learning to accept children as human beings who naturally react with fear and anger when they are denied the love and understanding that they need. A good boy, not sugar and spice, and not all puppy dog tails. Tommy is a real person.